Uh, Matt, take this one. Had a woman last night for the first time who wanted the protection, but she became hesitant when I asked her about the day she wanted the draft to come out and wouldn't give me her bank information. How do you guys handle that? I told her the companies required it due to the AML laws. Yeah, I'm, I mean, so the typically don't get into draft date unless it's something that they're kind of really, really stuck on. So, you know, we want to get them the coverage when it gets approved. Um, we really don't want to wait. You know, keep in mind, they don't have that coverage till they get that payment. So if something happens in between, so you don't really want to push that date back at all to start with. Um, as far as, as as the banking information, like I've said before, um, you know, really, I, I, you know, first off, you know, focus on the Wells video there. She has a great transition, but um, it sounds like you were in the transition well, like you were there. Um, if something happened again, um, you know, it could be a trust issue, but again, really just focus on, if you explain it to them, just explain the fact that, hey, you know, this is just the way that most people want to do it. You don't really get that big of a break on, on doing an annual premium. You have to pay it all at one time. So, you know, if you want, if you want to do what most people do, we're just going to set it up on a monthly draft and, uh, and get it done that way. So, you know, explain to them. Sometimes uh, this helps is if you explain to them the purpose of, because a lot of people, why can't I give you my debit card and why does it have to be the bank information? Um, that debit card changes so much and you have a 20-year 20, 20 plan or a permanent plan, you're going to have to call the company every three or four years and update your card. So they just, they do it by routing and, and checking number for your convenience. Um, so I, again, maybe go back and watch Noel's video if you had a problem with the transition, but it sounds like you were in it pretty well, but just had some resistance, uh, resistance at that point in time. And again, you know, I've heard Daniel McRae talk about it. When we get into pushing out dates on, you know, start dates on policies and stuff is where you can bump into some issues. So we just want to focus on, you know, letting the policy get approved, letting them make the payment. And if they're really giving you pushback, then of course we can help with the initial pay date. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what I have found, you know, years ago, 17 years ago, EFT was not a big thing. And so we had to convince clients that was a safe draft. Uh, I haven't had many buck up and not give a bank information right now. Uh, it sounds like maybe it was either one, a soft close to where it was kind of like, hey, we're just going to get you approved. Maybe it was too soft of a close. But one thing I always go back to handling bank, you know, buck when people like don't want to give you bank information is if you make a big deal about the bank draft, they make a big deal about it. So in other words, it's word choice. It's not the company is going to take the money. Don't use that term. We're not going to go in and take your money. It is simple. All right. What day of the month you guys want to pay this? All right. 15th. Okay. Uh, what bank you want to set it up with? What's the bank name? So like you just go into it nonchalant, like as a matter of fact. So try not to make a big deal about it, but it sounds like maybe it was a soft close and they really didn't see the value and have the trust factor with you on that deal. Uh, Ashlyn, let's go to this one. How should we handle it when we don't get a confirmation on an appointment when we're texting? Um, I mean, how I handle it, I still call them. I still call them. If they don't confirm it, I mean, I get busy, so I understand not. You see the text, but you don't always respond. Um, and I've honestly had a lot of really good appointments with people not sending the comp like not answering the confirmation i still call them if they answer they answer if not well i already have another appointment in 30 minutes so i can run that one um i still call them and give it a chance that's good yeah a lot of times people if they tell you like when you first text them and it says hey 6 30 is good got you down for 6 30 i found most people don't send a confirmation back like got it okay we'll do and, and send back most people don't. So to your point, Ashlyn, booking every 30 minutes, if you have a no-show, you know, you're already ready for that next call. You're not waiting an hour, two hours where you lose your momentum and you lose your drive to help people. Uh, Matt, take this one. What's the biggest way that complacency kills in this line of work? Complacency will cost you absolutely everything. Um, you know, <laughs> I can speak upon, you know, when I, when I talk to you guys, I'll just kind of talk about, you know, my journey and, you know, what I've gone through. Um, when I started, I wanted to be complacent. Like I wanted to play music a bunch still and just come in here and, and sell some big policies and hit some, hit some easy commissions here and there. 
Um, but it just doesn't work that way. Um, all my blessings have been just, just stuff that most people would think were awful. Uh, back surgery, I got my license. Um, a pandemic, which made me focus on my business. Um, the first thing that that killed was music. So that was, uh, that was when I really started to focus in and, and, and get rid of some of my complacency. Um, complacency will cost you everything. Your pending work, if you don't deal with your pending, you don't get paid. Um, that's a huge one. So if you get complacent once you, you know, taken an application and you don't follow up and, and get the people approved, then, you know, that will cost you everything. But, um, you know, one thing you're going to learn in this business too, it's not even just, it's not about the money you make, it's the person you become. So, you know, if you're asking that question, I guarantee you're probably complacent in other things in life too. So, you know, let, let this be a, a building block for, you know, your entire life and, and what you do going forward. Um, you know, this is kind of, that's the way that I look at things with this business. And, you know, even when I, when I became a musician, I didn't know how to play guitar, you know, eight or nine years ago. And I really wanted to do that in Charleston. So, you know, I took vocal lessons and guitar lessons and just kind of had that vision, but I guarantee it, it was never about the money. And the same thing now, I'm just starting to build a team. It's not about the money. It's about the, you know, when I look back last year, I saw the income that I made. It's about helping other people and, and showing people that the system uh, is, is phenomenal. If you get in here and just, you know, humble yourself and drop your ego and follow the system, then, um, you know, as long as you can shower and chew gum and simple stuff like that, it's, it's easy as long as you follow the directions. But as far as complacency, I mean, that's going to, I mean, everything here and, and in your life. So um, I, I know that's kind of a roundabout way. There's not one direct thing that I can think of except for just the word everything. I love that word that you use everything because, you know, in this business, you know, you can get eaten alive if you're casual with it. And, and I know you hear us talk about being intense with our business. It's because we've been complacent sometimes in, in like you said earlier in all of your life, you know, how you handle anything is how you handle everything. So like, if you don't pay to attention to details here, when there's bigger things to pay attention to details, you won't pay attention to details. So when you said everything, man, that is like a sermon that we could go off on. I could get John Kite and he'd spend like two hours and really crush it and talk about that because that every the word you said, everything is so true. Because if you're casual with this business and you're not intense and you're like, oh, they say you get six to eight, I can get three or four appointments. I can do this. I can you know, I've got this going on. I want to do that. This will be a very expensive hobby for you. Very expensive. So um, I love what you said, Matt. Ashlyn, let's go with this one. Final expense lead, uh, I guess a life lead. Booked a meeting. During the meeting, they told me they already have the cremation paid for. How do you suggest if that scenario happens, do you dig for other options or look to cover other things? Well, I, any appointment I have, whether it's final expense or mortgage protection, life leads, any of those, um, I ask all the questions, what kind of life insurance do you have? Do you have burial insurance? So I can already know what they do have and know what they need. Um, if their cremation's already paid for, do they have any outstanding debt? Like, would they have a house that's going to be left for their kids to have to pay for? Do they have anything like that where their kids would have to deal with it if they were to pass away or when they were to pass away. Um, I did just write a final expense last week with that same scenario. He was, he already had his burial paid for actually. So they already had like the plot paid for and it was all paid for. I was like, wow, you're really right on it. Um, I was like, so do you have anything like, is everything taken care of? Do you have a mortgage that you have to pay for? And he goes, well, I did just get a second loan. I was like, okay, so what's that gonna what's gonna happen if something happens to you is your kid gonna have to take care of it and he's like well I don't want my kid to have to take care of it and so talking to him more and more and just having a conversation with him found out he cared about taking care of his second loan so his kid wouldn't have to take care of it um and so I was able to get him his age I was actually able to get a mortgage protection for that but it's just a matter in all honesty the way I would answer that is just talk to them and figure it out I mean cremation's paid for but we all got something else out there. Even if you're 85, I mean, I sit down with 85 year olds who still have mortgage loans and still have car loans and all this other stuff. They all have it. 
and a lot of them want it paid for so their kids and grandkids don't have to take care of it, but it comes down to the price. Great point. Great point. You know, going into a life lead, you know, one of the first questions when you transition would be, do you have a mortgage? And if they have a mortgage, then I'm going into the mortgage, even though the cremation's paid for it. Like I'm going into my needs analysis, mortgage protection presentation. Uh, maybe they didn't have a mortgage. I don't know this situation uh, that you had when it was a final expense lead. But if what Ashlyn just said, talk about your cremation is paid for. You heard Ashlyn. Great. You planned ahead. Like compliment them. Like what that does to someone. Think about this. It's words of affirmation. When someone says, man, that's awesome. You've planned ahead. It's like all of a sudden they kind of sit there and they're like, mm -hmm, yes, I did. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like you're complimenting them on that and say, all right. And what Ashlyn did, she dug deep. Well, what other kind of debts do you have? All right. Let's say in that scenario, they didn't have any credit card or any loan. All right. Oh, cremation's paid for. Everything's paid for. We're debt free. Okay, great. So I got a husband and wife. All right. You do realize when one of you passes, you're going to lose that income. Now you're going to draw the higher of the two, but you are going to lose an income. Can you still pay the bills here? You know, the power bill and everything. Could you pay that solely on your income? All right. Wouldn't it be nice if you could give your wife a boost to put some money in her savings account to where it could help pay some bills where maybe you guys don't have to dip in your nest egg that you guys have worked so hard for? Wouldn't that make sense to do something like that? So, again, you're not going to get them all, but trigger. Keep digging. Like Ashlyn said, what kind of debts do you have? Do you have a credit card? Do you have another loan and stuff? So good stuff. All right. Uh, take this one, Matt. How do you ask a person divorced? to bring their boyfriend, girlfriend who doesn't live with them, but helps with those types of decisions. So I'm assuming, Matt, that uh, maybe they have a boyfriend, girlfriend, or a significant other that says, hey, I got someone that helps me with these types of decisions. Okay, so they're not, they don't necessarily live there. They're not tied to the mortgage. They're not even maybe the person they're protecting. Um, then I would just kind of question, you know, you know, why? I don't know. That, that, again, I think we're getting into something here that doesn't happen that often. But, um, I, I mean, if I were in that situation, I would probably just explain to them that I'm the professional. Um, you know, we, we, we take classes on this stuff and we, we take spend our time to learn about the products and stuff like that. So, you know, I get kind of offended when, when people want to take it to somebody else who's not the professional and doesn't have the license, you know, or the doctor. You're the professional, you know, why would they want to talk to somebody that doesn't know about the product that we're even offering? So um, I would just kind of maybe how Ashlyn just explained to talk through the process of the question before, um, just kind of talk through that process of why they would want to talk to them if they still do. I mean, if they're, if they're a beneficiary or if they pay the thing together, then it would just be the same as you don't want to run a one-legged appointment, but as far as they're just like their spiritual counselor, advisor, some person, then I don't know. They don't have that. Uh, they don't have the insurance license. Yeah, that's, that's a great point, you know. Uh, but I think that, like you said, that's like a one-off that's like we rarely run into. But, um, you know, I, I've been in houses years ago. One of the first houses I went in uh, when I was training back in 2005 when I was still a baby that um, the the – female said, I want to talk to my son. I want to talk to my son and just kept saying, I want to talk to my son. And it made sense for her to take out a policy, but we still want to talk to her son. So the guy I was uh, training with looked at the wife and said, what did your son do for a living? And he says, oh, well, you know, he's a train conductor. He, you know, he drives trains and stuff. He says, he said, look, I don't know a whole lot about trains. All right. I could speculate, but I'm not going to go tell him and give him advice on how to drive a train. You know, I'm in this every day. I'm a professional. Like, he don't need to be telling you about this. Like, I don't need to be telling him about that. You know, this is something that you can help take care of your son one last time before you pass away. Don't you want to do that? You've been taking care of him his whole life. You got one last shot to make sure that he's taken care of. So, uh, but you always want to get the decision makers together. Never one leg. That's the term we use. You never want to get husband and wife where you talk to the husband and don't talk to the wife at the same time. But I think to your point, Matt, that was maybe a one-off, but uh, I always ask them, Hey, you got anybody else you share bills with, you know, maybe, maybe that's a good question uh, instead of a co-bar. Cause some people think, 
oh, well, my wife's not on the loan. She, you know, I can handle it. Okay, well, no, I need to talk to both of you guys because this is important information I need to go over, right? So let's see. Um, send your questions in. If you guys got some questions, we'll be get, glad to help you out. Uh, here's a question. Um, are there text templates on the website specifically for final expense? I have seen text for the mortgage protection. Yes. On the back, back end of the website for the life leads, there are text templates for you to go uh, into. So, um, Let's see. Here's a question. I'm getting a high rate of opt out or not interested through text messaging for appointments, mainly using A1 and B leads. Is this common or should I look at other way of communicating? Thanks. Ashlyn, take that. If, if they're opting out through text messaging, you know, tell you stop, how do you handle that? Okay, I get that a lot. Um, you're going to get it. It's going to happen. And when they say opt out or stop or no thank you or I've gotten a thumbs up, like they, you get all of those. I call them. I call them and um, I will say eight times out of 10, I'll set it because I'm having a real conversation with them and they realize, oh, it's not an automated system. There was one time when someone said, stop, I said, I'm not an automated system. I sent them the picture of the thing they filled out and then they set the appointment through text because they were at work and I tried calling them, they didn't answer. Um, but I still call them and if they tell me, yeah, I get lost. Okay, fine, get lost. But you have to tell me that over the phone. Got you, got you. So uh, I think we did have a text script up. We'll get a revamp one to make sure we have it on the website if it's taken down right now. I know it was up, but uh, we'll make sure we get one up. But I love what you said, Ashley. You just pick up the phone and call. So when someone says stop, you're like, hey, let me make sure you're, you know what you're saying stop to, right? Like you request this information. I'm just following up with the information because I think a lot of times, even though text is such a great resource for us, it can be a hindrance and a, and a crutch for us because text can get lost in translations. I know a lot of times in uh, friendships that I have, sometimes a text can come across the wrong way. And then I'm like, oh, flip, let me call real quick. Hey, sorry that I didn't mean to come across that way, right? So when someone says stop, pick up the phone, hey, I'm a real person, just so you know, you're telling, you're saying stop to the information you requested. That's okay. I'll update my file, but I just want to make sure that you know what you're saying stop to. Right. And, and, you know, here here's the thing, guys. Out of 10 leads and Connor said this beautifully out of 10 leads, you're going to have a certain amount and, and categorize them. OK, I will tell you this in your business. When you have leads, you have ones. All right. The ones are the ones that say they got the what the check to the forehead. Is that what we've been saying? They got the check to the forehead. I need insurance. Like, how much is it? Let's go. 10th of the month, let's go, right? Like there's several ones in there. Now, some of those ones you might not be able to help, health conditions, whatever, but there are ones that are just lay down cities, okay? And then you have the threes. I don't care if you're Brandon Hall, Zig Ziglar, Matt Pertusa, Ashlyn Hughes, you're not going to close them, like not going to happen, okay? Your presentation can be on point. They're just going to be stubborn and they're not going to get it, okay? But then there's the twos, the twos are the ones that need to be educated. How many twos you create ones and not let them become a three, that's what your career is going to be built on. Your career is not going to be built on the ones that lay down. Your careers are not going to be defined by the threes that tell you no. Your career is going to be built on the twos that you create a one and never let them become a three. All right? So if you've got the expectation that if I've got 10 leads, I'm setting six appointments, and I'm writing three apps. I mean, think about this. If someone tells you stop on those 10 leads, think about this. So if three apps is average $3,000, all right, go with me with go with go me down this journey real quick on, on, on some math. I'm not good at a lot of things, but math I'm pretty decent at. But go with me with this. So if you've got 10 leads, okay, and you're going to write three apps, and that's $3,000, when you got 10 leads, someone tells you no, $300. Someone says stop, $300. Someone says I'll set an appointment, $300. You get the point? Then you get down to the last three when someone says yes, 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 that's $3,000.
So I'm not saying every time you get a no, that's $300, but that's the mindset of every time I get a no, I'm just depositing in the bank. I'm just depositing in the bank because I'm getting closer, closer, and closer to that yes to where, okay, now I just had 10 no's in a row, but someone said yes, that was $1,000. I made $10 for every no that they said, right? So uh, let's see. Let's Sorry to get up on that tangent. Let's look at this question real quick. Um, I have sent a huge amount of texts, and I think that I've gotten my number on the spam list. Has this ever happened to anybody? What do they do? Call your carrier. Okay. Call your carrier. Let them know that's happening and that something's wrong, and they'll fix it. That's never happened to me personally, but I've heard it happening to somebody before, and they just had to call the carrier. Yeah. And, and I think to your point, Matt, is – most of the high producers, and I think that uh, uh, I think Scott said it uh, two days ago. Most of your high producers, they're using their personal cell phone. They're not using a you know a robo dialer. They're not using a, a system to go in. They're not doing yeah. anything like that. They're using their personal phone. So if that does happen, I haven't heard of it happen a lot, but maybe some one offs. Call your carrier. Let them know. Hey, I make a lot of sales call on my phone. Make sure that I'm not a spam. You know. Let's see. Activity for three months or so. All right, Ashlyn, take this one because they called you out. Ashlyn wrote 42000 last month. <coughs> She's like 21 years old. Really only been doing this actively for three to four months or so. What did her ramp look like? What does her schedule look like? She's the benchmark for young ages. I totally agree with that, you know, um, so I was 22 when I started in the business. Ashlyn, you know, started earlier than that when she was 18. So Ashlyn, talk about your progression <clears throat> of, uh, I think this person's been in three or four months. Talk about your progression because you didn't come out of the gate writing 42 grand a month. <laughs> no. you know, so talk about your progression uh, and how you have ramped up probably your lead investment, but I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but how you ramped up to write 42,000 a month. Um, yeah, lean investment is a really big one. Um, I was scared to buy leads. I mean, if you watch the podcast, you'll hear it. I was terrified to buy leads. Um, now I look at it as an investment. Um, and so I spend at least a thousand, honestly, more than that a week on leads. Um, also, uh, my mindset, I changed my mindset. My, I was a young kid when I got in. And so once I changed my mindset to I'm a businesswoman, I'm a little boss, um, it got a lot better. Um, consistency. I will be honest. I was the girl who would get nose showed and go get my nails done. I'm not even going to lie. Or I'd go shopping. And that was when I was running in person. Um, yeah, it was really bad for business. And once I stopped doing that in the field, before I even did virtual, my business changed significantly. Um, virtual has um, shot up my business a lot. Um, I've never written 42,000 in a week until i not in a week in a month until I started doing virtual. Even my best week to date was 24,000 and that was virtual. Um, and so I would say consistency, your lead cost is really is my main thing. Um, as long as I know I've got at least a thousand to $1,500 worth of leads that week, I know I'm going to have a good week. Um, you will have those off weeks. I don't run. I used to run 12 appointments a day. I don't do that anymore because I'm pregnant, so I'm tired all the time. So I do what I can, but I at least get my six. Um, I shoot for eight. Sometimes I don't make the last two because I'm too sick. <laughs> but um, I would say really the main thing, lead cost. you got to up your lead cost. I mean, I think there is um, still a template that shows if you spend $500 a week in leads, this is what you're going to see. Um, and so the more you spend in leads, the more you're going to see as your um, APV and in your bank account. I mean, my husband and I have, we had our biggest month to date in deposits in March. And I was like, I don't even know. I don't know where, I don't know how I did it. I just did. And I just put my head down and I run. And plugging into the coaching calls helped a lot too, because it's consistent coaching. It's consistent growth, which helps a lot. I don't know if that answers your question, but no, I, I think you, you you nailed it by saying, you know, number one, you change your mindset. You know, you, you looked at it as I'm not a young agent little girl. I'm a boss. 
Like, I'm here to help these people. I'm a professional. Like, that was your mindset going into everything, right? And then you talked about your lead investment. You know, coming out the gate, you know, we want you to cut your teeth on the B's and C's because you have to develop that skill set. You got to have that skill set. So she upped her lead investment to where being virtual, she's more efficient because I think I heard uh, on the podcast with Noel was she went from running five appointments, wearing herself out to running 10 a day, right? So you're more efficient with your time, Ashlyn. You're able to see more people and you're on the daily coaching call every day. But one thing that is huge that uh, I heard was consistency. Like you had your biggest month in March, but you're not taking your foot off the pedal. And I think that's a big head fake that we have in in general in this business is the best thing in the world is you're your own CEO. And it's also the worst thing in the world because you have a big month. Sometimes it's real easy to slide back and say, you know what? I killed myself last month for four days, five days. I'm going to go down to two or three. Okay. Well, what happens is, you know, you start losing your momentum and then all of a sudden you start sliding out of being consistent and your, your daily actions. And it's tough to get back. I mean, it's tough. You know, the toughest thing in the world is not starting going to the gym. If you don't go to the gym, it's being consistent in the gym, taking a week or two off and getting back going like that's tough to do. So capture your momentum and continue to stay on your momentum. Uh, we got a few more minutes. Let's go ahead and see what is in here now. Um, are you all on A leads now, Ashlyn? This one's on you. Do you mainly run A leads now, or do you have a mix? Um, yes, yes. I will run my A leads first. Um, like if I get my fresh leads, those are the first ones I'm contacting. But I'm still gonna go through my entire stack of leads from February. I'll, if I have downtime, I will text them. Um, like yesterday, I texted through my whole stack. I was just sitting here texting. I had my show going. I mean, Scott knows that's what I do. I turn on my show and I'm texting. <laughs> but I mostly run A leads. A leads is where you're going to find, um, I honestly, the most success because you're not having to work as hard for them. But that's just my personal opinion. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Matt, real quick, um, when trying to get clients on video, I'm getting at least half of them that do not want to do anything but a phone appointment. I'm using the training instructions when trying to get them on camera. Anything I should try different when doing this? Thanks. I mean, you're 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 not following it somewhere because um, I don't know. So, like, if I'm if I'm talking to JB and I'm getting them, you know, the first thing I do, I some everybody does it different, right? So, I'm just going to tell you what I do. I don't get the, the email when I'm booking the appointment. You know, I don't get it through text or anything like that. If I'm talking to somebody on the phone, if, I, if I'm calling them to introduce myself as their field underwriter assigned to their case, I don't get it then. We just, I schedule the appointment. When they answer the phone, I already have the email pulled up to send. It has the subject in there, mortgage protection appointment with Matthew Pertusip. My state license already attached. Hey, James. Or, hey, Jonathan. How's it going? This Thank is Matt. Man. Hey, great. Uh, what's a good email for you before I before I say anything else? Yeah. So what's a good email for you? I get the email. I send it over just like Nick Burns would say. I want you to know who I am before we start talking. Are you able to go to your email now? Yes. Okay, great. While you do that, I'm just going to verify the form. Um, it says here you, uh, you're at 1234 Sesame Street, Charleston, South Carolina, correct? 25-year-old uh, male, non-smoker, correct? Yeah. Okay, great. Are you at my email? All right, great. If you go all the way down to the bottom, not the, not the attachment, that's just my state license so you can have it for your records. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of my email in the signature section, there's a link that says whereby.com in my name. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and click on that. Okay, great. Yep. Just ask you to put your name in. Just hit continue. You do not have to do that. Request permission. Okay. Well, is this going to put me on camera? It can if you want it to. I would love to see you, but the main purpose of this is so that you can see me so that we can, you know, if I need to do a screen share, you know, I'm, I'm sure if you were, you know, if I was you talking to somebody, I just want to feel comfortable and know who it was I was talking to. 
So the main point is for you to see me. So that kind of eliminates everything by catching them off guard. They do not have to get on the camera. They can pull you up and, and hit do not allow on their end and push through that. So whether, and I, you know, again, that's as simple as I keep it, but I don't have that problem. I get everybody on camera. If, they, if they're not, I mean, at least to where they can see me. So I don't, I don't have that problem at all. Maybe just kind of smooth that out a little bit. Um, I mean, you got to be maybe possibly telling them that that's what's going to be happening before you. I mean, they're in my email clicking that button before they know there's any type of camera that's before they even know they're going to see me. So if you're doing anything different then you're you know, kind of doing yourself a disjustice because you're probably not going to get them on camera quite as often. Um, you know, and it comes down to if you're if they're not if they don't want to get on camera, there's probably probably something like they you know they don't understand quite what what the appointment's about. They already might not you know just be one of those one of those couple that uh, JB was talking about that just doesn't matter who you are. Brandon Hall is not going to get them, so don't beat your head against the wall that much. But I wouldn't spend a lot of time running an appointment with somebody that's not willing to get on camera either or at least pull you up on camera because again, they can do that without not getting themselves on there. So if, if they're not, then they're not really serious about what we're doing in the first place. And if they're not willing to do that, I'm not, you know, again, we're the professional. I've got too many families to help out. I'm not giving you my time. If you're not at least willing to pull me up on your screen and then I'm on to the next one. That's why we schedule every 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, to your point, you direct, you don't ask. And what I mean by that is so when you call them, hey, what's a good email address? I'm going to shoot it to you, right? Let me know when you get that email. You know, because a lot of times people say, well, I don't have my computer up. Okay, well, you have it on your phone? Just let me know when you get it. I just want to make sure you got my state credentials. Then, you know, I send you state credentials. I have a picture of myself and family. And it's like right when they get the email, first thing they say, oh, you got a lovely family. I'm like, yes, ma'am, I'm blessed. You know, so it's like, it, it, that is like, Oh, he's a real person. He's not a Mr. Insurance man, right? Big bad man. He's oh, he's a real person. And then it's like, hey, that's my state credentials. Just want you to have them. You see in the email signature, Jonathan Burns, senior field underwriter. Just like you said, Matt, you direct them. Hey, go and click on that link. You don't say, hey, I want you to click on that link because I want you to be able to uh, see a video of me. Like, no. Hey, go and click on that link. You're just directing them. Don't put your name in. I know who you are. Just hit continue. Right. Nonchalant, Matt. I love it. Uh, you said something a minute ago. Every 30 minutes, someone asked a question, Ashlyn. If you're running back to back to appointments in 30 minute intervals, how are you able to go through the whole process and get the application within such a short time? OK, so um, am I always time to my appointments? Absolutely not. But I've always been told people like to do business with big people. If you are busy then they know you're doing something. I do, and I'll text them. If I'm running super behind, most of the time I'm only running like 15, 20 minutes. Um, and I've just gotten that down pat because I know my presentation, how I'm going to do it. It's by consistent practice, and I just know what's going to happen in that presentation and how what I'm going to say when I'm going to say it and then how I'm going to transition. Um, but if I am running super late, I will text them. Uh, my next appointment and say, Hey, I'm running about an hour or however behind. Um, can, is it good for me to call you or do you want to reschedule what's better? If it's, it's like a late, late appointment. Cause most of the time I'm running appointments in the evening. Um, I will sometimes run over people like to talk. They'll talk to me for forever. We, we need to, we probably need to have a chat because we stop, stop. Um, we live together. We're integrated, uh, except for you running off to your sisters and saying that's your home. But besides that, and I don't have any problem with you going hanging around with your friends at all, except that you say that that's where you live. You don't live there. You live here. This is our life. We need to integrate our, our finances because I make plenty of money. And you're dancing. And I know you're dancing. I see it. You know, I know you're dancing with finances like... You know, you're almost overdrawn or, you know, you're less than $50 or whatever the case is. We need to fix that. There's no, yeah. re there's no reason for it. It's driving me crazy. There's no reason for it. I'm just wondering what was charged. Again, stop. Not important. We need to integrate. So 
you you're, you're not the best at managing finances. You're not. You know, you you have this, you know, credit card thing where you just kind of max out this Amex card. What's the, what's the credit limit? 1000, 1500? No, 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 but they just lifted it, but I still I But just... the point is that you max it up because you use it for all these little things and you don't think about. It. You say, "Okay, well, I don't have the cash. I'll put the money back in when I get paid." And you're always at the limit. It needs to end, you know? I mean, I use my Capital One card to buy my leads, and then I pay the mortgage, pay the house, pay the rent, and then the next check I pay down the credit card. I don't pay it. All, I don't pay it off because I don't need to pay it off because I can if I want to, but I just don't need to do that. I have ten. We have ten thousand dollars in savings, and I just pay, I already paid the rent. You know, so we just need to stop doing this. You just stop thinking like a silo, a silo. Like yeah. this is me and this is you. You need to stop doing that. Do we live together or not? Do you love me or not? Are we going to stay together or not? If you believe all those things, stop it. Stop okay. doing it, you know? Just, I mean, we can we can set it up so you can just integrate, integrate. We'll pay the bills We'll pay the bills out of one account just so we know where all the money is going because we're going to be living together for, I, I don't have any plans of this ending tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. I don't have any plans. I, I don't see, I don't see an end point. I can't, I don't look at you and say, this is not going to last. So let's stop. And I, I hope you don't think that way about me. No, I don't. So then, so then stop it. I'm still not confused. Why is it overdrawn? That's my point. Yeah, I have to see. That's I, my point. But, okay. Well, I'm, I'm switching this medical. I know that was... <sighs> well, it is because you're, because you're not efficient. is back tomorrow so you guys can get the starter and not uh, have a bullpen kind of day so listen go get your six to eight appointments because that will set you up so to where you can win the day and you can't was, was united health care so this is for the prescription drug plan so they put this through 132 well, you paid it so naturally they put it through 